God is an outrageous God. And that's the theme of our series, Outrageous. That the more you get to know God, the more you surrender to God, the more you enter into His kingdom and who He is to you and in you, God's grace and goodness just get absolutely outrageous. Today we're going to talk about how God's outrageous goodness overcomes our insecurities. Now, we all know a lot about insecurity. I mean, there are times we just feel awkward. We feel like we don't fit in our own skin. When we're around people, sometimes we just feel like we don't belong, that this isn't the place for us. And we really have a hard time finding a comfort zones and places in life where we can truly be ourselves. People are often worried about their appearance. Uh, they're afraid of the mistakes they might make. Maybe they'll make the same mistakes that others in their family line have made. And they make us insecure, like we're, we're just waiting for the other shoe to drop, so to speak. We're just always anticipating the next and worst thing. Well, today we're going to talk about a guy in the book of Judges in the Bible who was just like that. He was really insecure. God shows up to a guy named Gideon in Judges chapter 6. In Judges, you encounter the nation of Israel at a very uh, a difficult time in their national history. They had conquered the Canaan land and they possessed it. But after that conquering generation had passed away, the next generations did not commit to holy following. God like that victorious generation did. And because they didn't commit to wholly following God with their lives, uh, God allowed difficulties to come to bring them back to Him. It should be noted that God brought correction for the purpose to bless the people. And what happened was they took the correction as that God didn't care about them. So God used judges to keep rescuing the people and then to rule them while they were uh, in the Canaan land during the period of Judges. So we encounter a guy named Gideon in Judges chapter 6. And that's when we learn that it's important for us to listen to God and not the voice in our heads. <laughs> Those old tapes, I like to call them, that replay all the worst things that we can remember about our lives. So God shows up to Gideon. He tells him, he says, God, or he shows up through an angel, sends the message to the angel that God is on Gideon's side. And this is Gideon's response. If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. And in verse 15 of Judges 6, Gideon goes on to say this, But Lord... Gideon replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I'm the least in my entire family. You see, when God came to Gideon, he told him he was his God. He gave Gideon a new identity. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But the thing was, in Gideon's mind, he was a loser. He, he was the, the least of the least, the loser of losers, so to speak, in Gideon's mind. And so when God spoke to him a, a new truth, a, a possibility, a potential for his life, Gideon couldn't accept it. All he could hear were all the insults, all the mistakes, all the embarrassing moments in his life. So remember, when God speaks to you through His Word, through a sermon, through a worship song, through an event in your life, through nature, through the voice of a friend, or even the, uh, the voice of an enemy, when God speaks to you, hear the voice of God and don't take heed to those old recordings in your head. Because God sees what you can be, not what you are today. I love what the angel says to Gideon first thing. I mean, by the way, Gideon is threshing grain in a wine press, which what that means is he's hiding from his enemies to thresh grain because if they find out he's threshing grain, they're like that bully in school. They're going to come and take away his lunch money, so to speak. And so he's hiding. He's not a brave man. He doesn't have confidence. And so this is what the angel says to him. He says, mighty hero... The Lord is with you. Now, Gideon, in his mind, he's a nobody. He's the, he's the loser. And here God says, you're a mighty hero. And then God says, 
I will always be with you. The Lord is with you. And Gideon couldn't wrap his head around that. Let that be a lesson to us. God's words, God's voice, that's more important than all those other voices rattling around in that echo chamber in our minds. One of the awesome things about God, though, is just like God was patient with Gideon, God is also patient with us in our insecurities. Gideon had a really difficult time with this. I mean, the angel comes and give him, gives him a message, and Gideon gives the angel a test. He gives God tests later. He, he The whole fleece thing got totally out of hand. And, and then there was uh, the fear the night before he was supposed to actually fight the Midianites, and God sent him into their camp to listen to a dream that he gave a Midianite soldier. It's just, the point is, is that Gideon never really had courage. Gideon was never really secure and he was never really confident in who God was to him and who God could be through him. But God was patient. God worked with Gideon. We're not setting a precedent here that it's okay to test God. We're demonstrating in the book of Judges, God is demonstrating his patience with us to bring us out of those insecurities, out of those fears, out of that feeling of worthlessness and nothingness and into an experience of victory. Now, Gideon isn't the best illustration of an overcomer in the Old Testament. I could think of many um, who would be a much better example of what it means to trust God and follow His will. But the thing is, in our lives, just like Gideon's, God always offers us peace even in the midst of our insecurity. There's a Bible word called shalom. Shalom is, is not just peace, although it, in its simplest definition, that's what we would call it. It's not just peace, though. It is joy and wholeness. And you see, that is the foundation of our insecurities. We need completed. We are not whole. We feel incomplete in our appearance. We feel incomplete in our intellect. We just realize in our heart of hearts, in our soul, we know that there's a huge piece of us that's missing. And as we battle through life and face life's challenges, we feel inadequate because we know there's a significant part of us that is not present. But God is that part of us. And the minute we come to in our lives, that defining moment that we realize that God is not just an accessory I need to add to my life. I need to figure out how to get to church, how to give. And, and we, the minute we stop treating God like an accessory and start treating God like our purpose, like He's the foundation of everything that we do, we're going to enter into wholeness. God's going to complete that incomplete part of us. He will make us whole. That's what will give us joy. That's what will give us peace. God is amazing. I know many people's experience with God has generated doubts in their minds. They don't know if He's a good God. They don't know if He's on their side, just like Gideon. But the truth is, God is there for you. But you've got to release the way that you do things. You've got to stop, stop hiding in your wine press, hiding Hiding your life, your significance from the world. And you have to step out and trust your Father that He loves you and He means good for you. And when you do, you're going to experience an outrageous, mind-blowing, awesome God. I hope these words encourage you today to seek God and experience an outrageous faith.